I came to UCD in 1971 with one of the first syntax of undergraduates. I studied English, um, English and French in first year, then concentrated on English. I've graduated in 74 and then uh, did an MPhil in medieval studies uh, from 74 to 76. I think Belfield in 1971, it was beginning here, it was a new building, but it was an extraordinary stark location. It really was the middle of nowhere. And uh, even though there was the excitement of, um, of these new beginnings, there was a sense of bereavement as well. Bereavement that we didn't share in, but that every other student in every other uh, year from second year on really felt for leaving the terrace, letting the terrace go. And I think that there was um, a dark resentment and even anger at that loss. Uh, this is the time of um, student uprest, uh, student riots. And in a weird way, I think that the college managed to diffuse that energy and that rage by um, very precisely locating what was wrong in the move itself and uh, the sort of the internal upheaval within UCD took the place of um, protest against the external upheaval in the world. It was a strangely clever move, but then the authorities here have always been strangely clever and very lucky. I came from Donegal. Nobody in my family had been to college. Nobody in my neighbourhood had been to college. The terrace meant nothing to me, absolutely nothing. Belfield was where I went to university. And I, I, even though there was a lot of pressure put on by older students to regard the terrace as alma mater, it never worked for me. You have to remember it was so uh, haphazard in that early days. We didn't even have the whole, uh, the whole library here. Half of the library was in Earthsworth Terrace. There was only really one place where you could get a cup of coffee, that massive canteen. There were no nooks and crannies. Again, I think it was deliberate. You couldn't meet and plan the overthrow of civilization. But um, for me, um, Belfield was college. That's what it was. I knew no better. I thought that this desolate, rather lonely, um, and rather exciting area as well was where I was going to uh, find my education. I feel that I do owe an enormous debt to some of the lecturers and teachers that I met to, that, that first um, confronted me in UCD, uh, especially in English. Um, there was Dennis Donoghue, Seamus Dean, Gus Martin. Uh, in Old English, which was my speciality, there was Terry Dolan. There was, um, you know, Rory McTurk, superb teachers. Um, and I was very, very lucky to have that because I came from one of the worst secondary schools imaginable. Um, and I suddenly had um, a tremendous liberation where I was being allowed to think for myself and encouraged to think for myself and even penalised if I didn't think for myself. And this to me was liberty. This to me was freedom. Uh, so I do associate the educational experience of UCD with a great liberation. Um, I remember very clearly going to a, a lecture of Dennis Donoghue's and I had come to UCD to study history and French and I went into Theatre L and there was uh, Dennis Donoghue talking to us about Shakespeare's The Expense of Spirit and the Waste of Shame, that great sonnet. And I listened for an hour and at the end of the hour I said I study in English. So it had a hell of an impact. When I was a young student, I had hopes that someday I would write. Write what? I didn't know. But I found the course immensely challenging and immensely difficult. And um, I had to work extremely hard to get through the first year especially. That didn't let up from second year onward and through uh, the postgraduate. I mean, UCD was a place where I, you know, I really, really had to slog um, because the standard was pretty challenging. And I certainly was not somebody to whom, um, you know, brilliance came naturally or easily, and it never has. Uh, you know, I had to put the sweat, blood and tears into it. But I, it was worth it. it was, the reward was the knowledge and the, the degrees came from that. Well, Belfield was grey. The building was grey, everything. Well, I'd say lifestyle was grey. There was even a, a separate toilet for nuns, I remember that, on the corridor of the arts building. It was that strange. And it was, as well as being grey, I think it was safe to say that it was heterosexual. It was a deeply, darkly <laughs> heterosexual place. I can always remember um, Betty Purcell, who would be around my time, put up a notice for the first ever women's liberation meeting. 
and um, she specified that it was woman only. And I think that Betty would know better than I would that they were invaded, that a, a bunch of guys decided this was outrageous. But I remember the courage that it took for Betty to do that. And there were two fabulous, beautiful men, uh, Jerry McNamara and Hugo McManus, and they dared to have a drag act. And for wonderful defiance, they did it in the theatre of the Science Building, when you couldn't get a gang of more macho twats than they were studying science at that time. And they did it. And they did it in full regalia and full defiance and full music. I'll never forget Hugo dancing to Bette Midler's leader of the pack. I tell you, it was many things, but it was not grey. But that was the first sign something's changing. And something's changing. And it could happen in UCD. I came to Belfield in um, October of 1971 and the first great trauma was in January of 1972, Bloody Sunday. And here I was from Donegal, from Buncrana, 10 miles from Derry, and uh, this appalling tragedy was happening, this grotesque act of violence, act of war. And I've never felt more far away from where I'm from than on that day. UCD was shell-shocked, I think it's fair to say. It was really in a state of, I can't describe it, it was almost like exhaustion um, that the sheer time that had passed from the announcement of the, the, uh, the death in, uh, on the Sunday into the Monday. And there was a gigantic march being organised and a great energy and great effort. And I didn't go in it. I just walked around the campus and thought about why am I here? What am I doing here? Why am I not among my own people in Derry? And uh, I hadn't the money to get the bus for home, I remember that, because things were very tight financially always. But I do remember that as a day that life changed. Uh, certainly my political life changed forever. No, I didn't become more politically involved because of that. I felt that Dublin was at such remove from all that really was going on in Derry, and that the South really hadn't a notion but what was being suffered there, and could do nothing to stop that suffering, could do nothing to change it. I gave up on the South after that, really, and I gave up politically um, on UCD. You have to remember, I am from Donegal, and when I would meet uh, friends of mine who might be involved with Sinn Féin um, at the time, I would talk to their friends. I was never in Sinn Féin, but I was certainly close to a lot of people who were, and um, I would meet these people from Dublin, and I would say to my, my Sinn Féin Northern friends, I'm, su I'm surprised you're associating with Finn Gael now. And they'd say, no, no, they're, they're actually Dublin Sinn Féin. And I took them for Finn Gael, you know. That's how lacking in republicanism I felt they were. Never said it to their face. Doing it now. They know who they are. <laughs> I was attracted to medieval studies in English because for me it was the era of that culture that was closest in spirit to the, um, the certainties and then the doubts of my own. Um, it was a, 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 a culture that rewarded loyalty, a culture that understood the nature of heroism, that um, also uh, was imbued with this fantastic so stoicism. And these are qualities that I was reared with, qualities that I aspired to um, acquire. Uh, and whether I did or not is another matter, but for me the medieval, medieval literature uh, of, of English culture uh, is the embodiment of these um, priceless, terrifying truths. I had the privilege of having Terry Dolan as, as, as a tutor and as a lecturer and then as a friend. Um, I loved the wickedness of his lectures. He was um, capable of inserting some highly dubious claims and some wonderful, outrageous uh, statements. Uh, he made this world, he made this medieval world fun. He took the um, sternness out of it. Uh, you know, he could give you a most informative, um, a most enlightening and most alluring lecture on Chaucer, uh, even like the Parson's Tale, which is about 60 pages of utter boredom, but Terry had the ability to set it on fire, on, on wonderful fire, and uh, I owe him a lot, not least the, the, you know, the lesson that, you know, teaching should always communicate the sense of, of danger and of, um, you know, the ludicrous. 
I came back to um, teach here in 1997, and I was a bit surprised to realize that um, UCD had not changed that much in that it wasn't the most open and friendly of, um, of places. It really wasn't. It was kind of hard to make friends, to make contact. Uh, but through time, um, you wore down the resistance of people. And, uh, you know, after 20 years, some of the dearest people you could ever work with and meet, that's what I had around me. But it is an institution that values independence and that places a premium on isolation. Um, you know, they've always has done that. There's always been something about UCD that um, you look to the outsiders for the, the work that's really going to matter. Again, in English, there's no, there's no shh, contradiction that Hopkins was here, the loneliest of all poets, and Joyce, the looniest, most magnificent of all writers, are they be the two that are most associated with. I don't think either could remotely be described as an insider in any respect, and it's quite appropriate that they are our, our um, saints. Well, the people who genuinely taught me here, um, people like Eva Thornley and uh, people like Rory McTurk and Terry, they really did uh, put an emphasis on finding your own discoveries, on conducting your independent research. But they also insisted on an exceptionally thorough knowledge of the material you were working with, with the, the text you were working with. So you didn't dare chance your arm with those people. And it left me with um, you know, a reluctance to allow students, when I was teaching them, to not do the work. And if they chose not to do the work, then I'd leave them alone. But when you did the work, you did it. And you really had covered it. You knew what you were about. I never, ever, ever forgot knowledge is the basis of all education. That simple fact is the determining factor of how well or how well you are not well you're going to do. They did put on my plays, but I didn't go to see them because I felt that um, it wasn't the right thing to do, actually. I mean, I, sh I should let them do them and do what they want with them. And I think if I'd come along, there might have been a, a sense that there was a right way to do it. And there wasn't, it was just their way to do it. So I live them alone to, to, to get, get it right, or even more interestingly, get it wrong. Um, and learn more from that. When I was uh, doing my leaving search and um, the, the dream of going to university first became a possibility, uh, it was always Dublin that was going to attract me. I had no intention of going to Belfast because of the civil war going on. I knew that that would be catastrophic. I had no real interest in Galway. Cork was a different planet, so it was uh, Dublin or nowhere, and believe me, Dublin was somewhere. I had a long desire to know the city to immerse myself in it. I mean, I had read Dubliners when I was about 13 or 14, and ever since then, George, I could sort of be my guide to this place. Uh, so I loved it. I loved the town before even coming here, and that has not diminished. And UCD is, of course, the central part of that experience. Well, the one thing I do feel, having been here from the word go, and having uh, studied and worked here, I have one great grief, and that is that the college did not keep Earthward Terrace. Absolutely, that was a terrible error. I know it would have been financially insanity, but it is a great grief, a great tragedy, that UCD is not still there, preferably the arts. That's where we should have stayed. Leave, the, leave this campus to the rest of them. They manage very well without us, don't they? Thank you.